partners. Join us for our 12th church anniversary on Sunday, June 5th at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. We are excited to celebrate 12 years of serving the Lord, and we are excited to sow into our 2022 capital campaign. This year's focus is the Grace House Project, a home for ladies and unwed moms. We ask that you prayerfully consider sowing into this year's capital campaign and join us for this awesome celebration. Also, join us for a special groundbreaking ceremony service immediately following our 10 a.m. service on June 5th. We are so thankful to the Lord for His faithfulness and look forward to what He will continue doing through us as we build the Grace House debt-free and under budget. This Sunday will be history in the making. Don't miss it. Partners, join us for our annual Summer Church Picnic on Saturday, June 4th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. right here on our campus, and it's totally free. To attend, simply visit our website at kingdomchristianchurch.org and click on the Events tab to register today. Registration is required. You don't want to miss this awesome time of fellowship.
If you want to see them, why don't you worship like that? Father, we love you. God, we honor you. Lord, we want to see you. Hey, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father God, we love you. We praise you. Whew. We do want to see you. <laughs> Amen. And Lord, I, I figured it out. I figured out how to see you. You told us in the Bible, you said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So Father, help us tonight to keep our hearts so pure. In fact, everybody right now, pray that out. Father, purify me. I repent. I do. I, I apologize. If there's anything in me that's not right, take it out of me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Purify my heart tonight in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. May, let my motives be your motives. Come on, somebody pray that out. Let my heart be your heart. Take out my heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh, a malleable heart, a heart that is flexible with your will and your plan tonight. Father, I thank you for clean hearts. And Lord, as we press into teaching and learning your word tonight, Lord, I just thank you for revelation, knowledge flowing freely in the name of Jesus. Come on, saints, you've done this today, but do it again. Our feet are shod to preparation of the gospel of peace. Our loins are Gird about with truth, we have on the breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, helmet of salvation, we have love. Our faith is working and it works by love. We got keys to the kingdom. Now, devil, we bind you, we thwart every strategy. Come on, you got to do it in authority. Take authority over your mind tonight in the name of Jesus. 
every strategic plan of the enemy we render it powerless and ineffective in the name of Jesus and father we thank you right now we thank you God that the light comes on the Bible says it is the entrance of your word that brings light Lord let the light come on tonight answer questions give us what we need to be buoyant Christians in these last and evil days you told us perilous times would come but God we thank you that you gave us a grace for perilous times. Where sin does abound, grace does abound even the more. And we thank you for the power of God that is on us, God. So speak through my mouth, think through my mind, use me for your glory, and we'll give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, shout about your victory. Oh, uh, come on, I'm talking about those of you who got the victory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. We honor God tonight. I'm so glad to be home. I miss y'all on Sunday. And uh, it most certainly is be good to be here tonight and, uh, and uh, be back in Bible study. Amen? Yeah. Amen. I do honor my precious wife tonight. Thank God for her. Looking so beautiful. Amen. And to all you, the people of God, are you ready to study and learn a little bit? All right, let's do it. You may be seated. Um, so many of you are ex ex excited I should say, about um, something we introduced to you a few weeks ago, probably a month ago now, uh, on regimen. Amen. Y'all remember that? And uh, so I said at that point that I would use that and go back into that to develop you in your, in your Christian walk. Amen. And so in this series, we've been talking about building faith, and we've been using the metaphor of building a house. And we gave you the foundation of faith a couple of weeks ago. We, we've given you some other ingredients that would go into successfully building your house of faith. Amen. Uh, and tonight, uh, how many of y'all know every house needs electricity? Amen. So tonight, I want to talk about building faith. But more specifically, my subject tonight is called Regimen Your Power Supply. I'm going to help you tap into where you get your power from tonight. And our theme verse will be Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 1 through 3. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse number 1 through 3. We're going to talk about regimen, your power supply. Anybody here besides me could use a little more power? Amen. What about a little more insight? Anybody got some questions you want answered? Okay, so you listen to this lesson tonight, and it's going to tap you in as to how to get all of those things accomplished in your Christian walk. Amen. All right, regimen tonight is what we're dealing with, your power supply, and we're still building faith. Now, let's look at a classic example of regimen, and this was Israel that was, uh, in this point, confessing their sins. They were getting it right with God, and uh, even when you become a part of the family of God, would you know that you still have to get it right every so often? Yeah, that's why the Bible says, if we sin, we have a advocate. We have someone we can go to and get it right. Did you know post-Christianity you can fall short? Yeah, and so that's why the Word of God teaches us that we, we have an advocate. We have a way that we can get things back on track. Amen? And that's what Israel was doing in this verse. Amen? Uh, it is a type of recommuning or reconvening with God. And uh, we see it in these three verses, and I want to walk through this in a way that's going to help you Grow in your Christian walk tonight. The Bible says, uh, now on the 24th day of the month, the children of Israel were assembled with fasting, which is a spiritual discipline, is it not? In sackcloth and with dust on their heads. Then those of Israelite lineage separated themselves from all foreigners. Let's pause right there. Did you know you got to live a life separate? Did you know in order to groom relationship with God, you're going to have to separate yourself? Do you know that your regimen is about separation? Some of us need to separate from the bed and get up and pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's as easy as that. But more to this point, you're going to have to separate from this world. Y'all, you take a bunch of CNN in, the only thing you're going to be able to put out is CNN. Because guess what? That's your regimen. Amen. I'm an equal opportunity guy. Fox, Fox News. You take Fox in. That's the only way, thing you're going to be able to put out is Fox News. Amen. Take a bunch of documentaries in all day long and not putting any faith in. That will be your regimen and you've not separated. So when the storm comes, you have no power. You have nothing to stand on. 
Now, regimen is critical in the off season. But I'm going to say something that is going to be oxymoronish and paradoxical to that first statement I made. Regimen is critical in the on season. Regimen is something that you must do all the time. Are you all in here? I used to consult with a major sports league, and one of the things I learned about the athletes is that their body is their business. So there's never a time in the year where they're not on a regimen. They're always on a regimen. Because if you're not on a regimen, when August comes, you're going to get cut. Somebody's going to take your spot because you're not in shape. Are you here? Right. So, no, they don't get on the other side of winning championships, come into February and March and April and get off their regiment. As a matter of fact, some of them work out harder in the off season than they do in the on season because they need their body to be well rested while they have a game coming up. So they don't have time to be lifting four and five hundred pounds during the season. They really work out in the off season because in the season, the season is a workout in and of itself. How many of y'all know when you come under pressure, you will pray? <laughs> Amen. No, you'll pray. You might not have a prayer life, but when pressure comes, guess what you'll do? Oh, baby, you're going to pray. Woo, Jesus. One of the things that I've learned about getting people close to God is this four-letter word, pain. Pain will walk you in the presence of God every time. Oh, yes. Pain will make you run to church. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pain help people get right. Right. So before pain comes and here's a good one. Instead of pain, get a regimen so you can thwart pain. Yeah. Some things don't have to happen. This is going to get good tonight. There are so many things the Lord told me in prayer that helped me avoid stuff that the devil wanted to see happen in my life. But because I had a regimen, God said, don't do that. Because I had a regimen, God said, nope, don't go there. I remember times of great controversy when our ministry was literally in the national light relative to me standing for certain causes, men going in women's bathrooms and other 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 national causes that that uh, literally brought the national news to me. And they would call the church and they'd reach out and we want to interview Dr. Rogers if he'd be interested and it'd be a national publication or national news. And the Holy Ghost would say, no, nope, don't do that. They're setting you up. But you wouldn't have known that if you didn't have a regimen. See, we got to pray. We got to be seeking God. We can't say yes to every opportunity. Amen. We can't be so quick to jump on stuff and say, oh, yeah, that'll, that'll put my name in lights. Are you all listening to me? You got to have a regimen. You have a regimen. You won't even date the wrong guy, less more marry him. Because you so in shape in your spirit. Every time y'all go out, amen, your spirit repulses him. You can't even be around him. But you know why? Because you are spiritual. You have sown to the spirit, and you are now reaping of the spirit. And when you reap of the spirit, your discernment is up. Your Holy Ghost is up. You got eyes to see on the back of your head. Man, there's so many things I've known before people ever told me. And it had everything to do with regimen, because when you have regimen, it's going to give birth to spiritual revelation. Somebody say amen to that. I'm going to teach you some things tonight if you stay with me. So they separated from the foreigners and they stood. And what the first thing they did in their regimen? Got their relationship right. They confessed their sins. We need to be more apt to confess some stuff. We got too many tailor-made Christians that got it all together all the time. But the Bible says that they did what? They confessed their sins. Amen. Father, I apologize. You know, my attitude wasn't right. Lord, I apologize. I shouldn't have talked to that man that way at the grocery store the other day. Lord, I apologize. I got too mad. Y'all remember only nine ways the devil can get in? Yeah, I got my lack some temperance on that. I wasn't gentle with my wife. God, I, I want to get that right. You want to know one of the reasons why I take communion every day? It makes me stay right because you can't take communion wrong. It's dangerous. So I take communion on purpose every day. Father, I forgive them. You know, that sister that offended me, Lord, I just want to forgive her right now. I want to get my heart right. I want to confess my faults in my regimen. Somebody say amen. amen. They confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. They were so conscientious of how their fathers blew it in this line of, of Israel. Let me pick up speed. And they stood up in their place and read from the book of the law of the Lord their God for how long, class? One fourth of the day. 
And for another fourth, they confessed and worshiped the Lord their God. Now, the Christian regimen, in my opinion, is locked up in those three verses. What every believer ought to be doing daily is locked up in those three verses. You're going to grow tonight. You talk about building Christian character. You leave here doing what I'm teaching you tonight. You're going to get some big biceps in God. You're going to do some strong curls. Amen. It's locked up into those three verses. So first of all, lest we assume everybody knows what a regimen is. I'm not saying regiment. Amen. With a T. I'm saying regimen. Regimen is simply a schedule uh, of activities that lead to a desired result that or should be a of. A schedule of activities that lead to a desired result. That's all a regimen is. Amen. Regimens come in all types, shapes and sizes. It's simply a schedule of activities that lead to a what? Desired result. That is a regimen. Regimen is so simply defined that I looked it up. I, I, I started using some of my online dictionaries and it's so easy to understand. One definition for regimen is simply a way of life. And did you know, as Christians, we have a way of life. Amen. We don't just adapt faith when we need it. We walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. I believe Habakkuk said the just shall live by faith. His faith. Amen. I am so keen to understand that my whole life will be henceforth from now and forever a faith walk. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith and not by sight. For all of you who want to get to a place where you just arrived, I can't wait till I'm a multimillionaire and I won't have to believe for any finances ever again. When you become a multimillionaire, trust me, God's going to make you have a billion dollar plan. <laughs> Amen. Wherever you are, he's going to require the next level. That's how God is. He is a God of faith. Are you all with me? And faith is going to be a key component of your regimen. But I told you all three things are locked up in this verse. I complicated it a little bit, and I'm going to show you that PowerPoint slide again. Y'all get it ready. But uh, before I give that to you, there are three things that you ought to be doing every single day. It is a way of life, and this is going to grow your Christian walk. It's going to grow your Christian character. It is going to build faith. It's going to give you insight. It is going to keep your spirit, come on, let's go back to the old series, over matters. Your spirit man's going to always be on top. Your spirit man's gonna always going to be driving the ship. Let me let you in on a secret. You have moments in your life where your spirit man is not in control. And if you don't believe that, the last time you went to the pantry eight times and got eight Oreo cookies, your spirit man wasn't driving the ship. Some of y'all said, no, I'm always spiritual. No, you're not, because you got one too many cookies just yesterday. Somebody say amen to that. At least for a nanosecond, you are not spiritual. Your spirit man's not always driving the ship. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. You're not always acquiescing to the spirit man. That's how you get attitude. When you're standing in line at the bank and the teller is going too slow, you most certainly are not functioning in pay. You don't know where to be. So the Holy Ghost ain't in charge. Somebody say amen. Who's in charge in that moment? The flesh. So we need regimen so that we can do what to the flesh? Subdue the flesh. The flesh has to be subdued. Y'all, if I didn't have regimen, I'd come and slap some of you. As a pastor, I'd just walk up to you and just slap you for being stupid sometimes. But regimen keeps me up here. Man, I got regimen. That's why I don't do that. I don't get in the flesh. <laughs> Say amen. Isn't this good tonight? <laughs> amen. No, I wouldn't slap you. But they did three things in this text. Are y'all seeing it? Number one, read the word. What did they do, y'all? Did they not read? Bible said in verse three, they stood up in their place. And what did they do? Read from the book of the law. Read Moses' law. That was their word. What's our word? The 66 books. We read the word every day. Somebody say amen. amen. Not only did they read the word, the Bible also says in verse number three that for another fourth of the day, they confessed. What were they confessing, class? They confessed the word. Now, confessing the word, if you know anything about scripture, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? 
Word of God. Now, many people think that's only the preach word. Primarily, it is. Amen. How can we hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he be sent? It is the anointed word that you hear that builds faith primarily. And however, you can confess your Bible out loud and still be building your internal faith. Did you know that? I'm going to show it to you in Scripture. You can confess your word. You can take Psalm 23 and be confessing the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And you have just personally cultivated faith and relationship with God. Isn't that good news? So sometimes we need to read the Bible out loud to meditate. His word means to murmur it. Meditating, murmur it, to say it out loud, to really read the word. So they confessed the word. But then number three, what did they do? They worshiped the Lord and did what? Built relationship with God. They worshiped the Lord. This ought to be your regimen fundamentally. That's the fundamentals of regimen. All right. Now, don't don't complicate this because many people take regimen out of context and they forget relationship. And I want to deal with that early on in this message before I get to all of the other good, juicy stuff that's going to make you really, really happy about the power supply you're going to get. Regimen ought to be about relationships. See, you're doing good tonight. You're taking notes. That's academic. But then you're going to have to take that academic moment and turn it into a relational moment. You're going to have to interpret that scripture you just wrote down throughout the week and meditate it and make it relational instead of something you just know cerebral. Memorizing scriptures is good, but revelation of scripture is a whole nother level. Somebody say amen to that. All right. And I want to show you that over in Psalm five and seven in my translation, ladies, put it on the screen. Psalm five and seven. This is so crucial. I want you all to see this. Psalm five and seven in my translation sound booth. The Bible says, but I will enter. I will enter your house by the abundance of your loving devotion. That's what my translation says. I will enter your house by the abundance of your loving devotion devotion. In reverence, I will bow down towards your holy temple. By the abundance of your loving devotion. How will you enter into the presence of God? By the abundance of his what? Loving devotion. What should our regimen be about? Loving devotion. Not rigor. Not that God, if I don't get 12 confessions in before I go to work, I've missed it. No, that's rigor. You might get stuck on one verse and just have loving devotion over the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm just going to meditate that this morning, God. I'm going to flip that around five different times and I'm just going to sit in your presence. That is class loving devotion. I will enter your house by the abundance of your what class? Loving devotion. In reverence, I'll bow down towards your holy temple. So I'll lay prostrate before you. That's a part of my regimen. I will seek you. I will honor you. I will worship you. Yet we will have a time of relationship. The word worship literally means, I believe it's in the Greek, to ascribe worth. That's all it is, to ascribe worth. God, I will tell you how valuable you are to me. I will devote with you. I will devote to you. I will spend time with you and I will build relationship, relationship above all the other stuff that we sometimes do in our regiment. Somebody say amen to that. Sometimes less is more in your regiment. All right. Sometimes less is more. Now, y'all put my little PowerPoint slide up there, please. I gave you this a few weeks ago, but sometimes less is more because I don't want you to overinterpret this, but I do want you to see it. All right. Daily regimen for power. Remember, Genesis 17, FaceTime. All right, so how do I hear from God? I get on my face before the Lord. All right, morning chapter. I always read the Bible before I read any other book. That's my general rule of thumb. I never look at an email or a text message before I have read the Bible. Are you all in here? I don't want to be skewed by anything. David said, early in the morning, I will seek thee. I don't want nothing skewing my soul, getting me off track. I don't want to hear about something that we got to do in summer camp. I don't want to hear about something we got to do for the purposes of my own family right now. I don't, I don't want to look at the most recent emergency in the world. The first thing I want to hear when I get started is the word of God. I read the Bible. Are you following? Sometimes it's random. Sometimes I'm on a topical study. Sometimes I'm studying health. And so I'm going to read the Bible on health. Then I'm going to read F.F. Bosworth's book on health. A man of faith who gave us the term 
Faith begins where the will of God is known. So I'm going to read his book on faith. I might read Pop Hagen's book on the anointing if I'm studying the anointing. Whatever it is, my regimen, though, is going to start with the word of God. Then prayer. Worship and do what? Honor God. Suit up and do what? Rebuke the devil. Now, this is so important. These things are fluid based on what you may be dealing with at the time. Now, you just found out that you, God forbid, got a cancer diagnosis or someone you really love is going through a specific issue. You might spend a little more time doing what in that prayer? Rebuking the devil. Because now we're in our James 4 and 7. We know what the problem is, and guess what we need to do a little more of? Resist. We got to resist that devil so he will flee. Are you all in here? Amen. I had a loved one to go to the hospital earlier this week. Amen. And, and that just meant a little more regimen. That's all it meant. Now, God is a guy's, God of sign wonders and miracles. Right before I came out, I got a text message with little prayer hands that said she had been released from the hospital. Y'all see how that works? But, but what does that? The prayer of faith, then you resist them, and you stay on it till you get the desired result. You don't come off of it. You stay on it. We're going to pray a little stronger this week. We're going to stay on it, right? Are y'all in here? Is that okay? Right? That's regimen. Contingent upon what's going on in your life, you might spend more time on your faith confessions relative to finances. Why? Because you're broke. No, that's not funny. I'm serious. If you don't have no money... What do you think you should be confessing? You might want to be doing some money confessions after you have sown. Hello? Ain't no sense in confessing harvest when you have no seed in the ground. Right? You come under attack under your health. What are you, where are you spending your regimen? You on some, you on some Isaiah 53 and 5, baby. Oh, yeah. We going 1 Peter 2, 24. We going in, baby. We going to stay right there. Hallelujah. Jacob, regimen. I won't let go till you bless me. But take the work out your regimen. Y'all seeing this? See, I, I think we got to learn the balance between faith and grace. Because if, if I do it by faith, amen, I'm not nervous and I'm not white knuckling everything. Oh, God, you got to move. If you don't move now, I'm going to lose everything. God, I need you. No, Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe I received my breakthrough in this. I take it by faith in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you. I bind you. I resist you. Switch over. Now, Father, I love you. I thank you for the results. Father, I'll be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, I've made my request plain and known unto you. Father, I believe I received my results according to Isaiah 65. You heard me before I ever began to pray, and in this, I am confident that you're already coming through. Then read the word and relax. Are you all getting the difference? We got to balance that faith walk with that grace walk because it's the power of God that gets it done after you take authority and stake your claim. Are you all in here? I hope I'm not boring you. Make your request how? Plain and known. Then do your faith confessions. And what should we do every day? We should hear the word every day. So that is a, a viable regimen. Now, is that fluid? Is that changeable? Everybody say yes. Contingent upon what's happening in your life. However, if I'm doing this regimen every day, secret sauce, some things won't happen in your life. Some things can't even get to you because you got what? Regimen. You know why some people injure their back? Because they didn't have the muscle to lift the thing they were lifting. Did y'all miss that? No, really. You can pull your back out if, if number one, you lift it wrong. But fundamentally, if, if you don't have the muscle to pick the thing up, this becomes strenuous. So injury occurs because I didn't have what was necessary when it came time to lift it. Or I didn't have what was necessary to lift it so that pain wouldn't have come in the beginning. Are y'all getting me? So there are some things that do not have to get to you. Listen to me now. If you master regimen, God will tell you stuff before it ever shows up. Look out. Don't go. Stay home. Don't travel. Do you think we're in a culture to where we need to know? <laughs> I said, do you think we're living in a time right now to where we need a heads up? Buy a, a freezer, an extra freezer. Come on, recession proof yourself. You'll hear some of that on Sunday, maybe. Amen. Regiment. So what are the three things we do in our regiment? We read the word. What's the second thing we do? We confess the word, which also includes 
Hearing the word. Number three, we do what? Worship the Lord. And what was Psalms uh, revelation of that? With loving devotion. Everybody say build relationship. Yeah, just just spend time with God. How many people in here when you pray, you actually have a consecutive five minutes where you don't say anything? That's a new skill. If you don't do that, it's a new skill. After you have prayed, regimen, study to be, now listen. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you're praying, Lord, I need you to answer. Come through. Can you come through any moment now? And God is saying, hey, I want to do something for you. Hey, but God, I need you to move. I need you to move. And you're just talking over God. But if you just get quiet for a second. All right, Father, I'm listening. What are you saying? Pray in the Holy Ghost. That's why we need to believe in the Holy Ghost. You can turn your tongues on whenever you get ready and build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the spirit and believe that God's going to give you an answer. Not only do I pray in the spirit, but say this after you pray in the spirit. I pray that I interpret. I pray that I get the answer of what I just prayed. Now let me help some of my babes in the Lord. What happens if you do that and in that moment of prayer you still don't hear God? You get up confidently and go to work. And you wait till you get an answer. And if it don't come that day, you thank them tomorrow for the answer you already got. Father, I hadn't heard you yet, but I know you heard me. Got to fast and pray, cut the flesh back a little more so you can hear them clearly, clearly. I want to be more spiritual so my ears are sharper. And one of the reasons why people can't hear God is they're not willing to do those extra regimented things that's going to magnify your ear. I guarantee you fast and pray, seek the Lord seven days straight. <laughs> Amen. Shut down all television and really get in God's faith. He'll answer any question you have. Pray in the Holy Ghost until you get it. I guarantee it. No, I'm not going nowhere. Nope. No more for me. I need an answer from the Lord. I'm just going to listen to the word. I'm going to wait until it comes. Hallelujah. I guarantee you'll have an answer. Boring, pastor. Because see, you're not going to have power until you get in some regimen. Yeah. And we got to start teaching our babes this. Now, the key to successful Christian outcomes is regimen. Joshua 1 and 8 says it so well. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Do y'all know what not mean? Do you understand how profound that statement is? That means the only thing I talk about in general is something centric to my assignment in God. Something centric to the word of God. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. If I'm talking to my family, I'm talking about the love of God. I'm talking about how we can enhance what we do as a family. Is that still the book of the law? Yeah, that's Deuteronomy 6. You're teaching it in the home, right? If I'm dealing with my wife kindly, and gently, I, I'm most certainly in Galatians 5, 22 through 24, I am in the fruit of the Spirit, and the book of the law has not departed from my mouth. The word of God is always in my mouth, but you shall meditate it how often? What's your regimen, class? What's your regimen, class? Day and night, and because of this, you'll be able to observe to do all according that is written in it, for then, after you have a successful regimen, come on, power supply, you will make your way prosperous, and what's going to happen? You're going to have good success in everything you do. Everything. Are y'all getting this? You are now highly successful, but you are not successful because of your Sunday morning shout. You're not successful because you came to class on Thursday night. You are successful because of your Matthew 6 and 6 relationship with God. You have prayed in secret, and what you have prayed in your secret closet, God is now rewarding how? Openly. Ne ne never covet anybody that's highly anointed. They just got regimen. <laughs> they say the great Smith Wigglesworth that would make people spit cancer out of their mouth, they say he wake up every day dancing before the Lord. That was his regimen. He started off shouting and praising God. And so they, 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 uh, Lester Summerall tried to bring a newspaper in his house one time. And he said, you can't bring those lies in my house. He wouldn't even read the newspaper. Woo, it's getting heavy now. Some of you would do yourself a great service. Somebody's going to listen to their pastor. If other than your business, you started starving yourself of all that social media. Stop taking all that stuff in every day, finding out who just went on vacation, 
finding out who just had a baby, finding out who don't like the next person, finding out who's saying glory, hallelujah, we had a time in the Lord today, and then the next day they dropping all kind of F-bombs. The same person. And that's who you friends with. That's who you linked in <laughs> with. You do yourself a great service if you just come off of all that mess, amen, and just get in with God. I'll replace all of that with regimen. Your windshield time coming home, amen. Instead of frivolous conversations with people who ain't happy for you, no way. Won't you turn on the previous night's Bible study, hear it again. After all, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. And let your spirit man eat. Do you know how famous you would be if you hadn't eaten physically since Monday? How many people in here have eaten since Monday? You had a bite to eat since Monday? Could you imagine how famous you would be tonight if you didn't have anything since Monday? Well, how do you think your spirit man is? Those of you who have no regimen. Your spirit man is starving. And you have no spiritual power when it comes time to implement the power. Then we walk around saying that faith stuff don't work. No, your fake regimen don't work. Because if you had regimen, your faith man would be building so you could decree a thing and it really be established. You don't get blessed just because you shouted down this aisle. It's getting heavy in here. I'm glad you can run around the church, but that ain't what blesses you. That is the outflow of praise. Praise God for that. What blesses you is what you do 24-7, meditating on that word day and night. Then you'll make your way prosperous, and then you will have what kind of success? Anybody here want some outcomes? Y'all still remember my, my, my definition of regimen, right? It's simply a schedule of activities that lead to a desired result. That's all it is. Singles, you know how I got married, you know, some years ago? Amen. My regimen became, I will not go out on a Friday night and get in sin. I will not go and do what the average young black man is doing. I will not go out there and just sow my wild oats. I will be a man of God, even in my own house. I will lift weights in my garage. I will tell my best friend to drop in on me randomly and unexpected. I will be accountable. Y'all ain't getting this. I will be a man of regiment. And I believe God gave me one of his best. I believe that's how we get married. I believe that's how we grow in the things of God. I can tell when some of you are out of regiment because you start getting overly emotional. You got anxiety on you now. You got a bunch of other stuff on you now. You know why? You're not in regiment. You don't have a prayer life like you used to have. Mm -mm. You can't tell me you're the same you that I see during a 21 day fast. Y'all, this is going to get so good. Even service is different when we all fast 20. Y'all notice that? When we, you know why? Because when you're on a 21 day fast, it's really not that you're fasting. Fasting simply makes you pray harder. Fasting causes you to cut the flesh back. Now your spirit man's so elevated because you haven't been eating frosted flakes. You done cut the flesh back so much. Come on, your spirit man getting all at once. You done been in the word intentionally all week long. So why is it that the things that work, we quit? Do it at the beginning of the year. <laughs> I'm going to get myself together. Amen. I've heard people say, I'm fasting from cigarettes. No, quit cigarettes. <laughs> to fast from something means you can go back to it. If you need a little behavior modification to get off of it, I get that. But overall, what's the target? The target is to stop. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Man, I'm trying to be tasteful. I'm going to get through a whole study one night being just tasteful. Amen. But regimen. Regimen. We need regimen. Ladies, while you're cooking, you need regimen. The Bible says in Isaiah, I think, 28 and 10, something like that. It says, build it line upon line, precept upon precept, ready for revelation. Here a little, there a little. You can get a little word while you're working out, a little word while you're cooking. Y'all seeing that? Somebody's uh, been using my verbiage here lately. I love to hear y'all say this. You're listening to the word as a sport. This is what you do. You prefer the word. Come on over all this other stuff. Am I okay? Guys, I can't even watch that many Hollywood movies in a row. Start getting vexed, even if they're okay. But in a minute, I, it's empty for me. I don't get a lot out of it. Ask my wife. On my day off, it, it is not uncommon for me to sit in the room and just take the word of God in. 
Like, that is actually fun for me. I love fresh revelation. I love it. If I'm not talking to Sister Rogers coming in or best friend, Pastor Ronnie, man, I'm listening to that word. I want to hear the word of God. Amen. But that's where you get your power. I hope I'm not boring you. Regimen always comes before power. And we got to discipline our bodies. Come on. Somebody say, we're going to have to get up. <laughs> I'm not bending this out of context. Hebrews 12 and 11 says, no discipline seems enjoyable for the time, <laughs> but painful. Anybody ever knew you had to get up and pray? And I'm talking about one of them November month times when it's a little extra chilly and you didn't turn the heat up the night before. Am I painting the picture? And as soon as you put your leg out, your grooves bump say, ah, man, didn't really feel like all of that, right? We've ever been there? Yeah, and I know this is about corrective discipline in Christianity, but sometimes we got to discipline our body. The Bible says of the disciples that their eyes were heavy. We got to get that revelation. Why are our eyes too heavy? Because you staying up the one in the morning watching documentaries? You can't get up and pray after all them documentaries. You still watching documentaries on Katrina. I mean, I appreciate it and everything, but we got to turn the page. Come on. You know, stayed up late watching a bunch of stuff you don't need to watch. No defamation to the people who came through Katrina. You know what I'm saying. But you just find the stuff. You ever started just finding stuff? Some of you do that. You go online and you, you find stuff. You're looking up crematories and who died and your, your city back at home. Oh, she died? No, you don't need to be doing all of that. You, you need to be in the Word. Discipline yourself. Somebody say amen. amen. Every minute unused is wasted. Regimen always comes before power. Daniel 6 and 10. Let's go faster, Pastor. All right, come on, let's pick it up. All right? Regimen always comes before power. It don't seem enjoyable at the time, but discipline your flesh. That's where you're going to get your power. Now, Daniel knew. Everybody say custom. Everybody say regimen is my custom. All right. Daniel knew when the writing was signed, that is when they were going to kill him. (laughs) Amen. For praying. Right. And, And he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees Three times that day. What was Daniel's regimen? Three times that day of private prayer. Are y'all getting this revelation? Do you know how powerful you would be if you went through a season of your life where you shut things down three times in a day for private prayer? And you can do it too. Morning, and I dare you on your lunchtime to steal away from the office and get in your car. (laughs) And then what's going to happen when you get off work? Have another hour of private prayer. What do you think is going to end up happening to your spiritual gift? You're going to develop the gift of the word of knowledge, the gift of, of insight, the gift of prophecy. Those of you in this room who want to know your spiritual gift, I dare you to do this because, y'all, Daniel had the spiritual gifts functioning in him. He was prophetic. But he was prophetic because he was in constant devotion and communication with God three times a day. Y'all, the more I talked to Sister Rogers, even when we first met, the more I learned her. I learned more about her in conversation. And we talked three times a day at a minimum, especially when we first met. But I learned more about her during that season. Are y'all getting this tonight? Because because regimen class, I feel like you're getting something out of this. Regimen is about relationship. So instead of, you know, the vows and these with God all the time, you can do that when you want to reverence him. But sometimes I, I, I tell you, I did it today when I came to church and spent an hour or more with him in prayer. I just said stuff like, you know, God, I really would like to see thus and so. Dad, father, you know, it'd be great if we could give me your impression of. Do you ever talk to him like that? What would you like to see happen, God? You know, what would be good? Is it a good idea for us to do this class or that class? We need to get like that with God. How many of you here have a dad that you've ever talked to and said, oh, thou great one, father? And I'm not coming against that because those are good words of worship. That's good in its right place. And it makes us feel closer because 
Traditionally, we grew up like that. But sometimes you need to just be like, hey, God, you know, Dad, don't, don't be irreverent. Amen. But, Dad, you know, with your permission, sir, you know, can you give me some insight, you know, on thus and so? I really would like to know what would be a good idea. You know, Dad, should I go to that family reunion? Because last time I went, everybody threw tomatoes at me. You think it's a good idea for me to go or stay home? He'll talk to you. He'll tell you. Then as soon as, soon as you ask him that, 10 minutes later, you get a text message from Aunt Lulu saying, can't stand your guts. <laughs> you got your answer. God spoke. <laughs> Amen. No, God spoke. Yo, why we let people spit up on us? No, I'm not coming. God will tell you. Amen. And some of y'all be having the answer. You just wish he would change it. Because you still want to be locked in with people you need to let go of. That's a whole nother lesson. In the upper room, he, he opened up his windows and towards Jerusalem, and he knelt down on his knees. How often? Three times a day and prayed. And what was a part of his prayer? Thanksgiving before his God, as was his what? Custom. As was his what, class? Custom. Come on, pastor, pick up speed. I'm almost home. Y'all still with me? What was Daniel's custom? To pray and give thanks to the Lord. Well, Luke 22, come on, let's get it. Luke 22 and 39, Daniel wasn't the only one who had a custom of prayer. N-A-S-B, this is so good. Luke 22, amen, and 39. And the Bible says it this way. And he came out and went, as was his custom. Who is that? Jesus. So guys, this is a revelation I got. If Jesus had to have a custom of prayer, <laughs> What would make the average Christian think you don't need one? Do you think you need a custom of prayer to not be oppressed of the devil? Do you think you need a custom of prayer to not quit on your Christian journey? The Bible says, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he what? Fall. Y'all, I still pray out the basics. The disciples, amen, when they were waiting, amen, and they were praying. In fact, um, look at verse 46. I'm so close to it, I may as well show it to you. Notice, notice what Jesus instructed them to pray. See, with some of us, we, we give ourselves too much credit. Jesus said to them, he said, why are you sleeping? He said, get up in your regimen. Get up and pray that you may not what? Enter into what? Temptation. Do we still need to be praying that we not enter into temptation? Do you think it matters that if the Lord delivered you from certain things, you still need to keep your foot on the neck of the devil? Amen. Is anybody getting this revelation? And so many times we think temptation is just for people going back on cocaine. That's true. We think it's just for people getting back in sexual conditions. That's true. But guys, temptation is anything relative to the old Adamic nature that wants to seep back on you. Some of you need to pray that you not go back into the temptation of living a life of fear. That you not go back into the temptation of living a life of unsurety, of concern. Is this good tonight? We need to be praying. We need to be subduing the flesh. You need to know that this world has gone crazy forever. We'll never be normal again. My wife and I were flying and she asked me a question. He said, you know, dear, before 9-11, did we have to do all of this? I said, no. I said, you know, if you would remember, you know, you didn't have to, you know, take everything off and, and all that kind of good stuff when you would catch a plane. Well, did that not change the world forever? Do you guys think we had some other events recently that have now changed the world forever? Oh, yes. I'm not making my message political. Did you think a day would come, though, where you didn't know who really won an election? What y'all think? Did you think a day would come? I mean, this is some comic book stuff where you think that people would actually be having to wear masks everywhere or contemplating wearing a mask, right? Like something you read in a Marvel comic book when I was a child. But the world has changed forever. When the Bible says, Shonda, that we need to be praying that we not enter into temptation, here's the revelation. The temptation to miss the rapture. Because that is imminent for some people. And you better be praying every day. The Bible says, pray that you are counted worthy 
We need to be praying that I never go back into being a liar. And if there are lies that I have not told the truth on, that I tell immediately. We need to be more serious about our life. And that's what regimen does. Regimen makes you serious. You 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 begin to. And I'm a minister to this one night. But Psalm 90, I think, says it this way. Father, teach me to number my days. See, my regimen does that for me. I realize, man, I'm getting older. God, teach me to number. my. I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot to get done before I go to heaven. So, Father, help me in this regimen to not be tempted to get off course for a minute. I don't have time to get off course. I wish I had some help. That's what regimen does. Regimen keeps you lock, stock and barrel walking with the Lord. And why must you pray that way? Don't have time to go there. Bible says in Matthew 26 and 41 tells you watch and pray that you enter not into temptation because the spirit is willing. But the what? Flesh is weak. Your spirit man will always do the right thing. But your flesh man is is weak. So we need to be praying. We need to be taming that flesh. We need to be telling that flesh, nope, nope, you're going to get up. You're going to seek the Lord. You're going to make your confession. Hallelujah. You are not going to cut this thing short. You're going to pray, right? And then grow in a place to where it's no longer about the discipline of prayer, but it becomes the relationship of prayer. Anybody here ever been on a date? Come on, help me out a little bit. Some of y'all, now I'm going to teach a lesson called How to Not Lie on a Thursday Night. Okay, I'm asking one more time. Anybody in the church ever been on a date? Raise your hand if you've been on a date. Okay, praise God. Yo, it's okay. You're not in trouble for being on a date. Like, oh, has he got a prophetic word for everybody been on a date? Yeah, you've been on a date before, especially if you're married, for goodness sake. You did something to get married? Okay. Um, now, could you imagine being on a date with that person and... They had to discipline themselves to be with you that night. Now it's getting good. Now we're tapping into the devotion part. See, I started with the baby food. The baby food is make yourself get up. Set your clock. Regimen, regimen, regimen. But no, 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 no. The big boy pants is if I got to make you go out with me by discipline, handcuff you to the car. How many of y'all know that ain't a relationship. That's not a good date. Come on, ladies, say it. Drop me off. Because if you're going out with me by regimen alone, meaning that you are just disciplined and meeting with me because you don't want to hurt my feelings or you got some other ulterior motive for taking me out, then I don't want to go out with you. Somebody say amen to that. And we need to stop treating God like it's not a privilege to be in his presence. So when we start seeing the privilege of regimen, we'll get up. We'll pray. We'll talk to him. Amen. That's a privilege. God, it's an honor to be able to have a regimen with you. I want to be around you. Amen. I want to spend time with you. Can't wait to get to my private time with you that I have earmarked to be in your presence. Somebody say amen if your pastor is talking right tonight. Amen, amen, amen. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, that we ought to pray without ceasing. Please write this in your notes. Don't value any regimen above prayer. No other regimen. Don't value it above prayer and time with God. TV, phone calls with friends, exercise. I enjoy exercising, but the Bible gave me the balance to exercise. If I can't, can only do one thing, that is either pray or go in my workout room, then the workout room takes an L for the day. Are y'all getting a revelation? If my schedule is that tight, I cannot value exercise over regimen with God. Is exercise a regimen? You better believe it is, right? But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4 and 8 that bodily exercise profiteth little. But it goes on to say, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Isn't that good? Godliness is profitable unto what? All things. This ought to make you feel good. That's why we don't make a God out of being thin. We make a God out of that. People don't go to heaven because they have extra weight on, or go to hell because they, they, they're not thin. <laughs> right? Take care of yourself because you should take care of yourself. Amen. But don't put any other regimen above your regimen with God. 
And for the record, I really want to say this because some of you need to hear it. Amen. You're still beautiful. Amen. As you are. Praise God. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but stop disqualifying yourself because of an imperfection. The Lord just took me down a rabbit trail for, for somebody. Well, I guess it's for a young lady. I can't get married because, you know, after all, I'm a little this, I'm a little that. I don't have, you know, I'm a little over in certain areas. I'm a little overweight. I'm a little dot, 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 dot. Right? But you mean you, you all of that, yet you live in holy? No, that doesn't disqualify you. You take care of yourself because it's the right thing to do. But the qualification is no good thing will I withhold from them that would walk up right before. I'm so glad that the Lord loved me and gave me some stuff in my past even before I had everything right. I just said something right there. <laughs> I know you're in the room. I can't possibly get a wife with a $700,000 student loan bill. Well, you're kind of right on that one. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm just teasing. You should pay that down some. <laughs> I would. <laughs> Man, that could be trouble for the marriage. But that does not disqualify <laughs> I don't know how you got a $700,000 student loan bill. Amen. You must have went to Harvard and Yale. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it doesn't disqualify you. We put rules on stuff that God did not put rules on. Amen. And somebody will love you. Yeah. Praise God. That was for somebody. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can I close this out? So what, what, what then are the benefits? Three things happen when you spend time with God. You all know the story. Exodus 34, 29 through 35. What happened to Moses' face when he came out the presence of God? It shone, the Bible said. Moses' face shone because he has shined. It's, he had spent time with God. Shone, S-H-O-N-E. He was, he was lit up. Because he had spent time with God. We don't, we don't have time to get into that full revelation tonight. But I, I want to give you three things. Because I told you some things would happen based off your regimen. Y'all got five to seven minutes. Number one, you recharge your power. You spend time with God, it's like, it's like plugging in your iPhone. <laughs> Resuscitating your phone. You recharge your power. And guys, Satan would deceive you to make you think that your regimen isn't doing anything. But I want to tell you something that you can overlook if you're not careful. Even when you have times of the word and prayer and confession and you come out and you don't feel nothing and you hadn't heard nothing, it worked. It worked. Never, ever make it about, oh, I had a visitation. The smoke and the clouds came in the room that day. That's great. That's wonderful. But as big as the book of Acts is, do you know there were not 300 visitations? Those visitations were spread out. No, Peter and Paul didn't see visions every day. But in their prayer time with God, they were building muscle. It did work. And you're going to see the outflow of that power at an opportune time, on a day when you need it. When you need to pray a loved one out of the hospital, your power will be working. Amen. When you need a word from the Lord, your power will be working. Right? So don't come out of the presence of God assuming, I didn't get anything today. Oh, yes, you did. You can be in this Bible study tonight. And y'all, this is not one of those hang from the laughter chandelier. Woo, Jesus. Ha, ha, ha. Mm, hey. Ho, ho. Ooh, it's not one of them Bible studies tonight. This is sit down, learn, and teach. But look here. This is one of the most powerful Bible studies you ever got. Oh, yeah. Because if you take this word and start doing it tomorrow. No, y'all, it's like curling three times a week. <laughs> that arm gonna get stronger. Hallelujah. Come on, boys, you ever, you ever notice you're bench pressing, bench pressing, and, and you kind of lock in on, on one, one weight for a long time, Dave? You know what I'm talking about. And it just don't seem like you're going up, right? And then on one fateful day, it's like I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> like, you can just lift it all, right? Well, that, that didn't happen that day. That happened over the course of the last three months of a good regimen. Come on, your first time running? Come on. Come on, y'all say amen. Come on, you know you're supposed to stop at the mailbox, but you stopped at the edge of the driveway. I know what I'm talking about. And then you know you're supposed to walk, but you, you got that side stitch. 
Then somebody aggravates you by coming by and saying, no, stand up. That's how you get more oxygen. Hush! <laughs> Just let me breathe the way I want to breathe. That's how you do when you first start running. But when you start reading Runner's Magazine, whoo, Jesus, you run past the mailbox and contemplate doing three more miles. Y'all understand what I'm saying? When you start wearing a watch and a Fitbit, oh, you in shape now, baby. You, you counting steps, lung counts. You know how many times your lungs expanded? I don't know how you measure that, but all right, get back on track. You recharge your power. What's the second thing that happens? Are you all still here? Come on, I want to get all this in tonight. You got it? You hear from God. Regimen will cause you to do what? Hear from God. Write this down. Direction and perspective. Direction and perspective. They're two different things. You hear from God. Direction and perspective. Nothing like getting in the presence of God, amen, and then all of a sudden you get a word from the Lord and it clears everything up. You get direction and what? Perspective. Those are two different things. Perspective is the idea that everything's going to be just fine. Direction is what to do next. Anybody want to hear from the Lord? <laughs> all right, I'm going to help you with that revelation. Go to Revelations 1 and 10. <laughs> Boy, I love the Bible. See, this is how I get these revelations. I just read my Bible. And, um, and then the Lord tells me to stop because I'm a word miner. So I'll take my King James or New King James or NASB and I'll compare words sometimes and I'll just mine the word, amen, because I know it's something in there. And I said, God, help me to convey this to the saints tonight. Well, he did that to me in this, in Revelations 1 and 10. John says, I was in the spirit. I was in my what? Regiment. I was in the what? Spirit. Amen. No, when I'm out eating, I'm kind of in the spirit, but I'm focusing on communing with my friends and family at that time, right? But no, but when I'm in my regiment, because remember now, John was all by his self. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and here's the revelation right here, and I heard. <laughs> John, when did you hear? When you got in the spirit. Everybody say that with me. Come on. I was in the spirit and I heard. Come on, say it again. I will get in the spirit and I will hear. Now say it this way. When I need to hear, I will get in the spirit. I will not get in the flesh. Woo, Jesus. Is that an incentive to pray? I was in the spirit and I heard. Well, pastor, I just don't feel nothing. No, no, that's flesh. You want the chills. You want, don't worry about all that. You want the smoke to fill the room. Don't worry about all that. Amen. No, 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 no. Just get in the spirit. God, I subdue my flesh. I'm in the spirit. I worship you. I love you. Now, Father, you know I need an answer to that question, sir. If you will oblige me by giving me the answer to that question, I'd be so grateful. And, Father, I know that you love the Son, John 5 and 20. You love the Son, and he always knows what the Father is doing. I am your Son. You love me. I am supposed to know what you are doing. According to Amos 3 and 7, you don't do anything lest you first reveal it to your sons, the prophet. See, I give them reason. Father, I'm your son. I know you want me to know. Will you give me insight on what to do next in this matter? It works every time. Is this good? Yolanda, is this good? I love when people say that. This is so good. See, you need to start communing with God like that. John 5 and 20, God, you, you love the son. You love the son. The son always knows what you're doing. I'm your son. You love me. I'm to know what you're doing, sir. Please give me insight on this. And I will not be anxious about it. I will relax knowing that I've made my request plain and know. Lord, talk to me. What, what Christian school should my kids be in in the fall? I will wait. I will wait. I will be like Habakkuk and Habakkuk too. I will stand my watch and listen to what you will say to me when I am corrected, when you give me insight. My wife was battling something some years back. I told you the Lord told me to tell more of my stories. He said, I let too many stories go, so this is one of them. And she was getting kind of sick. And um, so I got in my regimen, because I know believers aren't supposed to be sick. And she wasn't feeling good. And it was always in the midsection. And so I said, now, Father, I'm locking in with you, because I need an answer to this. Um, I know ultimately it's the devil. 
But sometimes you need wisdom on a matter because Satan uses things to afflict. He'll use your bad decision to afflict. Like sometimes a person can get sick because they just won't rest. Doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they were uh, under accusation of the devil, that they made uh, uh, somebody's wife their girlfriend or got in some sin. They just simply wouldn't rest. So as a result, now they, they allow some stuff to come on their body. Well, sometimes you need to get wisdom and hear God, all right? And God will say, take a day off. And you'll thwart the plan of the enemy. Stay in and sleep today. Do you think he'll talk to you? Oh, yes. He's done that to me before. Stop. <laughs> Don't go any further. <laughs> and you're revived. And you're ready. Right? Well, Sister Rogers was battling in her body. And I went over to my practice this time. I got in my office over there. And I just, I just prayed. And I just got before the Lord, and I said, Father, now I need the answer to this. I know you don't want your daughter to be sick another day. You know that's his daughter. I know you don't want her feeling that way. Now, what's, what, what, what is the wisdom on this? And all I heard was, it's the tea. <laughs> he said, it's the tea. It came right here out of my inward man. He said, it's the tea. <laughs> Tell her it's the tea. I got up from my knees. Once you get the answer, come on. When Rhoda starts knocking on the door, why are you still praying? <laughs> we can use prayer in a perverted way. Praying over something that's already been solved. Right? Now, I'm not believing God for a church building. I'm in one. That makes sense? Right? So I don't have to pray about that anymore. I got up. I called her. I said, hey, dear, the Lord says it's the tea. I don't know what that means, but it's the tea. She said, oh, my goodness, dear. You know what? Two weeks ago, I started drinking a new tea. Okay, stop drinking it. You'll be completely healed. She stopped drinking it. Within days, she was 100% healed, has never felt that ever again. Never again. What is that? That's all about I was in the spirit, and I heard. <laughs> Some of you little Johnny won't act right, get in the spirit. You need to hear. And the Holy Ghost will say, the aunt. The aunt. Gosh, I've been dropping him off at his aunt to be kept. Hmm. Gosh. But now I didn't know his aunt had idols in the house. And I know objects carry spirits. I didn't know his aunt was watching certain television shows. I didn't know certain other things. See, the Holy Ghost turns the light on. And you all need to get used to that. Anybody here ever had a dream? Oh, God. Y'all, I've dreamed about you in ways you have no idea. God just turned, boom. Yep, that's it. Ask this question. See what they say. Then it's up to them to answer right. But I already got the information. It's up to them to decide what they want to do at that point. Are y'all getting revelation? Because we are spiritual. We are not carnal. We don't judge a book by its cover. We judge everything by the spirit. A smile means nothing. The spirit of a man is speaking louder than what they're saying. Man, I got to let y'all go because I got more than you can handle tonight. Are you all still here? Yes. Amen. You hear from God. Everybody say direction yes. and perspective. The Lord has told me how to zone a property before by being in the spirit. I've had that happen, y'all. I can't tell you every story tonight. The Lord has given me insight on what financial move to make just by getting in the spirit. Some of you in here, you like investing in all that kind of good stuff. You ever thought that the Holy Ghost would give you insight? <laughs> My God, if some people get in the spirit with the way this economy is going, you can become a millionaire like real, real fast. Like if you know what you're doing. Get in the spirit. I'm not giving you invest, investment advice, but I'm saying, what if you heard God? How, OK, so if a whole city went bankrupt and all their properties, amen, sank down to little or nothing. And you bought in the right season. And you swoop everything up for a dime on a dollar. Guess what? It's a cycle. Then the economy came back. <laughs> then some developer wants all your land. But who told you that? The Holy Ghost. The Bible says he gets the oil out of the flinty rock. God will tell you what degree to get. That's going to bring you in high demand. I don't have time to get in this revelation. Man, the Lord told me to go to school and become a therapist years ago. He did. Yep, you go and you do that. I don't know why he told me all of that. Yo, I was on my way. In fact, I am very close to a fourth degree if I want it. I only am like 
five, four classes away. If I really wanted, I could have an MBA by the end of the next semester because that's what I was, I'm going to be the big banker guy, right? God said, no, you go and you get thus and so degree. And when I tell you, I have never on any day advertised myself personally in my profession because I haven't need to because the demand is so strong for a black man with a PhD. But who told you how to do that? The Holy Ghost. Like, if y'all got tired of me, I'd be just fine. <laughs> Are you getting the revelation? I won't have no problem. I never have to do it. Home phone rings off the hook every, say, am I right? Every saying, can't take them all. You know why? Because the Lord tells you. He, the, he goes before you. No, do this. Get in that profession. Come on, young people. I hope my gappers get this. Get in that profession. Become a part of that. Because I'm going to use you in that, and you'll never have a problem. Be just fine. You have security when no one else does. Boy, I hope I'm not boring you. I hope you're getting some wisdom from your pastor tonight. You get up in the spirit, you'll know stuff before it comes. You talk about recession proof, meet me on Sunday. <laughs> you'll be all set. Everybody else crawling up under a rock somewhere and you, you talking about, what's wrong? Well, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't, oh, they, they said, what? <laughs> you can't do what? Can't buy nothing? Oh, okay, I bought everything I would need for the next 18 years, I guess. <laughs> guess I'll be just fine, I don't know. I, just, I got my own electricity. Oh, okay. It's quiet, but I'm right. Everybody say regimen. regimen. All right, Pastor, give us the last one, and I'm done with this regimen thing. Number three, what happens when you spend time with God? Now, this is a key element, and we're, we're done. You learn. You learn. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my what? Burn. Well, what is the yoke of God? The presence of God. You get in his presence and what happens? You learn. Hey, guys, pragmatically, <laughs> if you read your Bible, guess what's going to happen? <laughs> You're going to have oh, yeah moments. Oh, didn't know that. No, you know what's going to happen? You're going to learn, right? Because you're in the word. And, and so, you know, Isaiah 117 says, learn to do well. You get in the presence of God, he's going to tell you stuff. Paul said, I was caught up to a place that I can't even talk about. You know what Paul did? He learned. God, if you're discreet class, he'll tell you stuff that you can't even release in certain seasons. I'm not trying to be deep. But he will feed you with information, and he'll say, all right, hold that. You know what you just did? You learned. It ain't time for that yet. Nope, nope, no, nope, don't share nothing. Just hold it. But you know what you did? You learned. Yeah. Anybody ever read a scripture and you learned something? And it just blessed your socks off? <laughs> My kids love this. They, 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 they tell me, you know, they're out of school now. But um, I'm teaching them to now pray for themselves because they think dad is their power source. So, you know, I teach them to do that. And I teach them a confession scripture. So I believe it was my daughter or my son came to me right before they ended. They said, Dad, we got, I got exams today. I'm closing. And they said, um, could you pray for me? I, I want to retain. I want to retain. I want to make sure I keep this information in my head. I said, well, you need to confess Proverbs 10 and 7, which says the memory of the righteous is blessed. Did anybody just learn something? Do you think when you got a major project at work coming up, you should lay hands on yourself and say, my memory is blessed? Yeah. Now, that's a bifold orientation to that passage or illumination, because the memory of the righteous, that is, when the righteous is no longer here, their memory is blessed. But the memory of the righteous is blessed. Are you all getting this? Right? Did you learn something tonight? Yeah, I think I learned something tonight. Every time I read my Bible, guess what? I, learn. I, 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 I don't pride myself on anything, Linda, but I enjoy faith. Oh, God. And one day I was in the presence of God, and Alicia, I was studying my Bible, girl. And, you know, I read this scripture, and the light came on for me relative to faith. Because I've always preached little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. But then I read a scripture that said, not all men have. You know what happened to me that day? I learned. <laughs> I'm closing. But that came from regimen. I learned. 
Guys, good job of coming to Bible study because you know what? I guarantee that 98% of you in this room tonight learned something. And the other 2% didn't because you weren't paying attention. But the 98% of you, no, you got something. <laughs> I marvel and I laugh at people sometimes. Because they say, oh, man, that's revelation. I say, no, that's information to you. You didn't know that. <laughs> Acting like you so deep. I just knew that, man. He turned that scripture around. That was revelation. No, it was information. You didn't know that. You know what you just did? You, you learned. You grew. And we need to get better at growing and learning. Amen. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to expand us. But you know where he expands you? In regiment. Regiment. And regiment to do that. Regiment, regiment to cost you sometimes. Regiment to make you get up. Mm -hmm. But then, back to the metaphor, it ought to be about relationship. I want to spend this time with you. How many people in here, and this is an honest moment, you don't have to raise your hand if you're not here yet, but how many in here, people in here, your preference is to actually hear the word over music? That's your preference. Okay, good, good. Some of you, you're working on that. That was probably 89% of the church. I'm not being funny. Those of you who still on more music than word, cut that music down, tame your flesh, and make it listen to the word. Because y'all, music don't do it. I promise you. It don't do it. I think it's hilarious, especially for my tribe, that one of the only reasons why we know the word is because somebody put it in a song. Come on. <laughs> you didn't know I'd never seen The Righteous Forsaken until Donna Lawrence sung it. <laughs> Said, I never seen The Righteous Forsaken. Said, I never been a lot of places, seen a lot of things, but I never seen The Righteous Forsaken. Said, I never <laughs> seen the righteous. <laughs> now, most of you, I say, where, now, where is that? Where is that scripture at in the Where is that? You don't know. They had to put it in a song. So I say amen. And if they can put it in a song to teach you the word, then they can put something in a song to dupe you out of the word. Like Kurt told y'all, what's his name? Hosanna, that ain't his name. <laughs> no, it ain't. You got all your theology from a singer. What's his name? Hosanna. Forever. <laughs> that ain't his name. Bad theology you got out of a song. Amen. That's enough. I'm getting on all them people. Y'all take that off the tape. That's, that, but you understand my point, y'all. You need a relationship with the... Lord, amen. People walk around talking about Jesus be a fence. Jesus be a fence. Protection along the way. Direction, my family, COVID, never mind. I'm staying home. <laughs> never mind. I don't, need, I don't believe in that fence after all. You know why? Because that ain't the word. <laughs> That's why you don't believe in it. Singing a bunch of lyrics, it ain't the word. Stand to your feet, I'm done. <laughs> Never mind, I'll see you in 18 months when churches open up again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want to pray for you tonight. I've gone a little longer, but I, I, I think I didn't go too long. I think it helped somebody. Amen. Amen. I want good to see you. I want to pray for you tonight. If you're here and you don't know Jesus, come on down. Let's get saved first. Let's learn him. Let's, let's learn of him. Take his yoke upon you and learn of him. For his yoke is easy and his burdens are light. Now, you're here tonight. You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on down. We'll help you. We'll help you get filled with the Holy Ghost. All right? Last but not least. Now, this is an honest altar call, y'all. You don't got to impress me. I clear it. I'm good with it. You might be good. You might be solid in this area. Um, I, you know, I can't tell you I necessarily need this altar call. I might. I don't know. But you vet it out. If you ain't here, though, and you honestly need to improve in regimen with God, I want to pray with you tonight. Come on. I want to help you in that area. Yes, yes. I want to help you in that area. Amen. So that's, that's kind of one of your, your up to yous, you know? We don't twist arms on that stuff around these parts. I just want to help people out. Amen. Growing in God. 
Are y'all getting this? We talking about regimen. Growing in God. Dear, I'll hold that for you. Amen. Growing in God. That's what God wants, man. You know? And I've had those seasons, man. I always liken it to, to working out because it's easy, you know? Easy example. But, um, I mean, the first day back in the gym doing legs... Come on, is it hard to walk the next day? <laughs> yeah, you kind of feel like stuff coming together. I almost want to go to the doctors because you just, <laughs> something squeezing the bone or something. You're like, that ain't, no, that ain't right. Now that ain't right. I should be able to move that. Now that ain't right, right? No, it, it, you're breaking your body back in. Now that's all it is. Your body's not used to that. Guys, if you're going to be serious about regimen, you're going to be breaking your flesh back in. Your flesh is going to say, no, <laughs> 5 a.m., no. <laughs> no, you kidding me? Flesh is going to make your eyes heavy. Isn't that in the Bible? The Bible says their eyes were heavy. Flesh does that. But guys, we got to get more used to telling our flesh you not in charge. You will not make this call today. You're not going to get what you want. I'm not giving you what you want. You are going to go this route. You know, I use these examples because they bring it home. You know, today before I came in for my office hours, man, superb workout. Got my run out there in, in, in the air and then came in, you know, a few weights and um, then came into town, had some business to do here in Charlotte. And the flesh said Dunkin' Donuts. It did, y'all. I heard him. As soon as I left the barbershop, he said Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> y'all know them flesh be talking. Yeah, I heard him. He said Dunkin' Donuts. Because he, that's how my flesh speak. He says, he throw a rock, then he hide. He said Dunkin' Donuts. I said, hey, hey, man, <laughs> you're not going to Dunkin' Donuts today. That's what he said. So, you know, Dunkin' Donuts is on the same street as the smoothie king so he got a good lean smoothie yeah get some healthy get some protein but you're not getting a donut now you're not getting it you need to do your flesh like i do my kids now you not getting one of those today i'm not buying that today somebody say amen, amen. right can we can we override the flesh right okay so for example y'all this is so practical sunday is a special day right it's the church anniversary do you think all members could come to every service? <laughs> Let, let's start right there. Let's get real fundamental. It is, and then go to the groundbreaking ceremony and not miss anything. Where else you going? I think you could do that. That's fundamental, y'all. Subduing, Shante, the flesh. Flesh not getting what they want. I just want to sleep in. Don't sleep in. Amen. I just want to do this. You can't do what you want to do. You are going to get up. You're going to, you're going to ride out this spiritual relationship with the Lord. We're going to do what Pastor Gabe taught us last night, tomorrow morning. You're going to pray. You're going to read your Bible. You're going to do for one-fourth of the day your confessions, another-fourth your worship. And Pat is going to bless you real good. Are you all ready for that? So, y'all, let's get strong. I'm so glad to see most of the pews emptied out tonight. I guess we all know we need some regimen. So, Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And first things first, will you do like me? Let's repent, Lord for any moments of, of overlooking regiment, Lord. You know, we were, we were so keen on, on our agenda, Lord. Can we pray that out, church? Can you do that individually? Lord, I was, I was so shrewd on what I wanted to do. I, I had a project I had to get done at work, so I didn't worry about prayer that morning. I, I had some other things I had to do, and God knows when I got home, I had to cook for the kids, and so I didn't have time for you then, and before I went to bed, I didn't stop long enough to kneel at my bedside and, and acknowledge you for the day, and for this, Lord, I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent. I repent in the name of Jesus. And then, Father, I come in agreement with my dear brothers and sisters that this will become a new season of life. And it will become a way of life, like that definition. Lord, I know this lesson tonight wasn't a waste of time. Teach us the way of life. Lord, we are in a diabolical culture. Schools being shot up. 
Oh, God, somebody said a medical facility got shot up recently and so many things going on. And Lord, believers need to be hearing from you. We, we need to have a closeness with you. God, I believe we can have such a regimen that perhaps not in every case, but some of the time we can stop some stuff because you'll tell us how to pray. Somebody will be praying in the spirit and you'll tell us pray against a gunman right now. Take authority over what the devil wants to do. So, Lord, teach us to value it, not to do it just because our pastor taught it, but that we would value it, God, in the name of Jesus. God, draw us in closer to you. We wouldn't be so susceptible to deceptive spirits. God, if we valued regimen, stuff couldn't seep in and make us disloyal, God, and, and cause us to start considering leaving and, and falling away from you and our church and, and so many other things that's good for us, God. If we had regimen. So, God, we put carnality to the side. If we got to fast a little longer, we'll do it. But we discipline our body and bring it subject because John was in the spirit and he heard. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, if nobody else was blessed by that tonight, I was blessed. How are we going to hear God by getting in your spirit? Getting close to you, shutting it down. God, as Pop Ghoul says, tapping into the frequency of heaven, shutting everything else down and tapping into your frequency in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. I don't, I don't know who all this is for. You keep your eyes shut, but some of you in this room, you need to come off of Facebook. I'm not talking about you're promoting your business. Some of you, you got some wasted God time on social media. If that's you and you're committed to doing that, raise your right hand higher, higher, higher. I don't need all of that in this season of my life. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Father, give them greater grace to separate as... Israel did from the foreigners separate from this world Lord I'm like Paul I can't count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do Lord if they're like their pastor God I've never been on Facebook I don't even know how to get on it I have never in my life I never made time for it God I never made time for it and it's I'm not calling it diabolical but I do know it's a distraction to people in their prayer life and then, Lord, we're distracted by stuff that's pressing in, news that we get, information that we had no business hearing anyway. Don't have nothing to do with us. Help us to be more like Oral Roberts, who, Lord, in so many cases wouldn't even go to a ball game. <laughs> this man was that serious about his assignment. Smith Wigglesworth wouldn't read a newspaper. God, give us a little more of that. I, I know we're still going to do things. We're going to go to plays with our spouses, Lord. You, you know, there are some things you allow us to do to enhance our marriages. And so we're going to go to the movies that are appropriate, perhaps. But God, in this time, we need to be a little more shrewd, God, about our connection with you. So, God, we thank you for that revelation tonight of regimen. Creating us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within. In the name of Jesus. Cast us not away from your presence. In the name of Jesus. Father, we want to sing those songs and really believe them. God, I don't know what the world's going to do next. I know they're always up to something. But I know regimen. Regimen will keep us separate. Separate. Separate and sacred from this world. Sanctify us holy. Sanctify us holy. It'll help us to wait for our husbands. In the name of Jesus, if we're a woman, it, it'll help us, God, to, to pursue godliness as a man of God if we're a man. And we thank you for it all. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, come on, we're almost getting ready to go home, but just lift your hand and thank him all over the room. I want you to thank him. You're going to avoid some things in your life because of regimen. Just begin to honor him. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for this newness. I believe it's a freshness that's been released. You're going to teach us your love. Perfect love cast out fear and so you're going to teach us more about your love in that regiment. Thank you, Lord. We'll be more confident because of regiment. Regiment, regiment. This church is spiritual viability is going up. I decree it because we have more spiritual members than carnal in the name of Jesus. Our regiment is increasing. The gifts of the spirit will begin to flow. The gifts of the spirit will begin to flow. 
on a massive level. Working of miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles will follow us. Because we believe, Pam, you're getting so much stronger in God. I asked Rhonda about you yesterday, ironically, and she told me she had a call with you at four. That's a SWM. I called her specifically about you. Now, that, that, that's meaningful. And we got a lot of members now, a lot of people online and in here. But God laid you on my heart. I believe that. You are growing in God. You keep on pressing in. It's working. Amen. Amen. The Lord has taken notice of you. Yeah, he's taking notice of you. So, Father, we love you. We love you. We praise you. We thank you right now. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the anointing that does destroy the yoke. I believe God's churning in us tonight. Cultivate, cultivate, cultivate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have a heavenly language, you can pray in it right now. Cultivate your spirit a little bit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Cultivate. 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 Amen. Father, we love you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. No diabolical distractions right now. I bind the devil in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You hear from God soberly and clearly tonight. He's downloading information because of regimen. Jesus' name. I believe the Lord will want you to know that if you'll get close to him, he'll show you which way to go. I believe that. I believe that's a word for somebody tonight. If you'll get close to him, he'll show you which way to go. I believe that. I heard that bubbling out of my spirit. Tell him, yes, yes, what we're teaching tonight is accurate. If they'll get close to me, I'll show them what to do. I will give you insight. Some of you are trying to make life decisions right now. I know it. I know it by the spirit. I will give them insight. If they will get close to me, they will know which way to go. I'm telling you, y'all, knowing is everything. Knowing is everything. I'm just ministering that because it's coming out of my spirit. Knowing is everything. If they'll get close to me, they'll know which way to go. Yes, yes. What to do, when to do, how to do. When to say no, when to say yes. When to move. Yes, yes. When to stay put. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I'm closing. This thing is so relevant and powerful. I had a, a dear, dear friend who had contemplated buying a piece of land um, years ago. And they vacillated on that thing, ultimately did not buy it. And this was when Walmart came, was coming into its hot season. I mean, they was the thing, pre-Amazon, Walmart. And um, the parcel of land that they contemplated buying the Walmart came and bought. I still believe to this day that had they heard God, that that was a divine setup for wealth and riches. Because guess what? They would have sold that land at a much greater premium when Walmart would have been willing to give anything for it. Are y'all getting a revelation? Hey, guys, hearing God will bless your life in more ways than a little bit. It'll tell you how to be healed. Stop drinking the tea. It'll tell you when to buy, when to sell. Hallelujah. It will tell you how to raise your child. The Holy Ghost will tell you when you're spanking your child too much. Do you believe that? They need more love now. They need more love. Yeah, the Holy Ghost will minister that to you. It'll tell you. He, not it. He's not an it. He will tell you everything. Your wife needs this. I've had the Holy Ghost there. Have I ever sent you a passage that was right on time after I came out of prayer? Yes. I had another loved one this week who I sent, and I don't have their permission, so I'm not going to share who it was, but I sent them three healing confessions. This was this week, right after prayer. I had no idea what they were going through. They sent me a text back saying, oh, my God, this was right on time. Something like I was up most of the night almost in tears over the pain in my body. Y'all, he leads us in all truths. Insight. Come on, let's pray that out. Father, increase insight. 
in the name of Jesus. Increase insight. I'm going to lay hands on First Lady as a point of contact for the whole church. God, increase insight in us. Insight. Help us to know, like Daniel knew, because his custom was to pray three times a day. Give us greater insight. Insight. And then help us to move in the season that you've ordained us to do it. In Jesus' name. Bernard, there's great wealth for you, brother. I don't know what side of the church you're on. There's great, there you are. There's great wealth for you in that decision that we talked about earlier today. Go forth, go forth, go strong, go strong after it. Amen. God, I believe, is going to show himself strong for you in that matter. There is, there is great kingdom wealth for you in that bucket. I believe that by the Spirit of God tonight. Amen. Will you shout about that revelation, y'all? It's coming. It's coming into the life of the blue. Come on. Give them great praise, great praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Bernard, I hear one more word. Great wealth, but great opportunity. Great wealth and great opportunity. I believe that's a confirmation. I know you know some things already, but great opportunity. Yes, in that area. Amen. I love you tonight, church. I'd keep you to 10, but I know you got to go to work. So come on, let's receive our evening offering. I enjoyed that tonight. Did anybody enjoy that? I did. That blessed me. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I enjoyed that. I'll be honest with you, church, while you walk into your seat, I'm not going to minister longer tonight, but I'm going to say this. There are some things, bless you, brother, there's some things that bless me, man. That word right there, that blessed me. Yeah, I'm going to press in myself. Yeah, and I've been pressing in, but I'm going to press in even more. Mm-mm-mm. Amen. All right, come on, let's receive our offering. Let's get you home. All right. Who's excited about church picnic? Amen. Who's going to bring somebody with you and share the gospel? And Yeah. So when you bring them, take them to the SAT table. Make that your mission. The food is free. I don't think there's anything on the campus you have to pay for this year. Um, I think it's all free. So, uh, you know, um, bring them to the food stops and all that kind of good stuff. But then bring them to the salvation table, guys. Um, there are a lot of people out there who think they're saved and they're not. And uh, so bring them there and let them get it articulated to them and take the test. Twenty twenty two. It's going to be. Yeah, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm serious. Come on. Who's increasing in believing that God's going to increase the harvest in your life? I, I see you. Amen. I am increasing mine. I am going above and beyond, and I'm believing that God is going to, to just break the bank on my behalf. Um, people don't know this, but pastors have things up before the Lord, too. <laughs> and so I'm going to show the Lord on Sunday. I believe him. Amen. And he's going to make it good with me, too. He always does. All right. So we're excited about Capital Campaign. Uh, it'll be a wonderful time. And then after service, don't leave. We are going to walk to the Grace House. And we're going to break ground, official groundbreaking ceremony. Is that good stuff, y'all? Amen. And you'll get a little keepsake uh, on Sunday by doing that with us. And then they'll have free ice cream and cake outside of the community building or cupcakes and ice cream. And, of course, food will still be for purchase. Fried chicken and fried fish, I think, is this week is what Ray Sean told me. So we're excited about that. All right. And uh, I just want to plug those couple of things. It is an exciting time in the kingdom. And um, married couples, I hope you got your token because we are getting ready to renew our vows. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. And so um, I was talking to Sean and Clear East, and I think it was an upgrade or something that Clear East told me she has coming her way. So um, amen. Clear East said, thank God for the marriage retreat. Yeah, so she's got it coming her way, and uh, I'm excited. I hope you ladies get a fine diamond while you're down there, or ruby or something you like, and uh, come back strong, something memorable, all right? So that's enough for tonight, um, and let's get ready to go. Dear, anything that I miss? Mm -hmm. Very good. So, yep, they put a church email out there for the groundbreaking ceremony. Please bring your tennis shoes, Okay. Uh, so that when you walk over there on the dirt and stuff, you, your heel won't sink in the ground. You wear something that is very easy to move around in, okay? Um, so that you don't uh, fall. And uh, you can wear your shoes to church on Sunday if you want to. And uh, then you're just forced to shout. 
If you got on tennis shoes, I'm gonna expect you to dance during the service, but uh, you can wear it. You can definitely bring them with you, and we'll walk over. Okay, I kept you long tonight. Let's let you go. All right, we're gonna receive our evening offering. Okay, all right. Um, now have you write your checks out, text to give, put it on the screen, and let's do our offering exhortation. Let's put that on the screen up there. All right, come on, let's say it together. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm blessed in the basket and blessed in the store. My bank accounts, investments, health, and relationships flourish. The blessings of the Lord overtake me in all areas of my life. I believe that. How about you? No, I really believe that. Yeah. Amen. Every area of our life. Amen. Amen. All right. These gentlemen are coming now. Now, y'all know. We confess this when we're giving, right? Everybody who's shouting giving tonight, amen. That's, is that right, Dave? Amen. We shouting about what's coming back in the return, amen. Amen, amen. We confess that because we are sowing in good ground, amen. And so we praise God for you tonight, all right? Amen. Anything else there? Come on, come on. Get your microphone. First lady is going to give us. Okay. All right, guys, will you mute this for me for a second, please? Job on that. All right, Kendra, thank you. Thank you for that reminder there. Okay. All right. That's good. Thank you for that. All right. Now, in the interest of, and I don't think that's classified, in, in the inf interest of what we're doing on Sunday, um, you all know this is our big, big time. Amen.